Sonic Forces, the first Sonic the Hedgehog game to be coming out in forever if you didn't buy a Wii U, is going to have the character creator. Yes, that third character Sega had been hinting at for months was in fact your own. You can pick from a bunch of different species with arbitrary bonuses, there's loads of clothing items to put on, and you've got an array of gadgets at your disposal to help out the fight against Eggman's forces. Oh, I see what you did there. Opinions are, at least going from the general public's reaction, seem to be pretty enthusiastic about the idea. Even people who don't really care for the series look pretty interested in the idea. Yes, you have the usual influx of people going, LOL SONIC, but they'd react that way even if the series achieved world peace. As for the Sonic fandom, it's perhaps been the most divisive decision out of a game that's already caused plenty of argument and debate. The obvious conclusion to jump to is that Sonic's fans are unpleasable louts who know what they want about as well as moody teenagers. And personally, I get the frustration. No, really, but I'll get to why I understand that in a bit. What I'd like to do first is express my thoughts on the idea of the character creator in Sonic Forces, player creation tools and games generally, and the potential of said tool within the Sonic series. Word of warning, I am not, at any point, going to use the phrases DeviantArt, Blonic, Original the Character, or any of the other shitty terms coined over the years to point out and mock the tendency in some sectors of the fandom towards making up their own Sonic characters with varying degrees of originality and skill. If that's what makes you happy, then I have no right to mock you over it. And anyone who does mock you over it is a contemptible bully who deserves a kick in the knackers. You do your thing, and be happy for it. Now, what do I think of Sonic Forces? Cool idea. I look forward to hearing more about it. Oh, you want more than that. Fair enough. I've always had something of an interest in creation tools in video games that allow players to express themselves within the confines of said game. Whether it's creating your own racetracks in Mod Nation Racers, making up a custom graffiti tag in Jet Set Radio Future, or trying your damnness to recreate David Bowie in Saints Row 4, I love the idea of being able to take part of the game and make it your own. In fact, I remember buying Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 on the Xbox simply because you could customize the character's clothes. And I don't mean the character creator that was already in the game. No, I mean taking any of the pre-made characters, Tony, Bamajera, Rodney Mullen, and the rest, and just changing their clothes into whatever I wanted them to wear. And yeah, that is a silly reason for buying a game, but when you think about it, it's really not that different a reasoning from what drives people to buy other games with some sort of creation tool. I can make my own balls-to-the-wall difficult levels in Super Mario Maker? Awesome! I can travel around the world of Dragon Quest IX with a party made of male Playboy bunnies? Awesome! I can retell the saga of my favorite soap opera in SmackDown vs. Raw 2011? Awesome! In fact, the idea of letting the players make their own mark in a game is what drives a lot of passion towards series driven by that concept. Would Mass Effect have gotten so much love if you couldn't decide what kind of person Shepard would be? Would Etrian Odyssey be anywhere near as fun if you couldn't have a custom party of three based on the Top Gear crew? In fact, even something as simple as a character creator can be enough to revitalize interest in a series. Take the Dragon Ball Z fighting games for instance. Yes, most of them have fans, but the series had been spinning its wheels for quite some time. Okay, so we're retelling the Dragon Ball Z anime again. Raditz Taboo, maybe some of the movies, and maybe a bit of GT if we're lucky? Alright. But then Dragon Ball Xenoverse was announced, and pretty much everyone started paying attention to it as soon as they found it and had a character creation tool. Holy shit, the first Dragon Ball game to have a good character creation system? And you get to fix the Dragon Ball timeline, all the while saving, fighting, and training alongside all your favorite characters? Sign me up! And now, Dragon Ball Xenoverse is one of the most successful Dragon Ball games ever released, selling over 3 million copies in a year. It's even got a sequel out with a thriving online community to boot. It's not surprising that Sega would look at this and wonder if this could be the thing that gets people playing Sonic again. But, you can only go so far with just the idea of player expression. You really have to do something with it to make players invested. Otherwise, you get this shitty character creation tool in Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi that only allowed you to create a male Saiyan, which is lame. So, how does Force's custom hero idea look? Well, 
considering we only have a few screenshots and maybe a minute of gameplay footage to work with, I can't say much beyond what I've already mentioned at the start. That said, I do really like the direction they seem to be going with this, particularly the fact that the custom character is using gadgets. One of my favorite characterization tropes is what is called the badass normal. This is where a normal person in a world of supernatural dealings or superpowers manages to be just as strong or powerful through their own intelligence, skill, or in this case, using gadgets to keep up with the superpowered people around them. I love that Forces is not just throwing special species traits or chaos powers at you and calling it a day. Instead, it's presenting your character as some ordinary civilian that wants to help out and has finally been given the equipment to do so. Heck, depending on what the game's plot could be, maybe your character got these gadgets from Tails, who's become the leading inventor for the resistance movement hinted at over the last few months. I am slightly miffed about the idea that you only have six or seven species to choose from, but maybe the character creation tool will be flexible enough that you can make your hero look like a fox, a coyote, or even a weasel despite what the species name says. After all, these two are supposed to be cats, and yet they look completely different, so who knows? But otherwise, it's a case of having to wait and see, really. It's a good idea, and I'm happy that Sega and Sonic Team decided to bite the bullet and give it a try, but there's no way of knowing how well this will go. And on that note, I do express one major concern. Will this idea be used to its full potential, at least within the context of this game? I kind of don't think so. Remember, Sonic Forces also has two other playable characters, Modern Sonic and Classic Sonic, each with their own gameplay styles. Yes, it's been implied that your custom character might just be playing through their levels as an alternate option, like playing music and Guitar Hero with Slash instead of, what, Johnny Napalm. But still, that means that the character creator idea won't be taken as far as it could be in this game. Because it can't. There's so much else the game has to try and do as it is that to attempt so would likely cause Sonic Team to go over time and over budget. And unfortunately, I don't think they can afford that right now. Going back to what I hinted at the start of the video, a lot of the Sonic fandom is divided over this game, and the tone of the discussion tends towards argumentative and angry. And I understand that, really. For a lot of people, it's been a long, long time since the last Sonic game they could play. Remember when the series was exclusive to Nintendo systems for a couple of years? You couldn't play Sonic Lost World if you didn't have a Wii U. And if you had a PC, you'd have to wait till about 2015 to finally try it. The Sonic Boom initiative was looking to massively change things up, which alienated those who did have a Wii U and caused them to lose interest. When Sonic Forces comes out this winter, it will have been six years since Sonic Generations. Six. Years. To give some perspective on how much time has passed, Star Wars has been bought out by Disney and brought back as a full-force blockbuster franchise, Fifty Shades of Grey came and went as a cultural phenomenon, Dragon Ball Dissection began and is now midway through the Frieza arc, and the famous vaporware games Final Fantasy vs. XIII, Mirror's Edge 2, The Last Guardian, and Doom 4 were all brought back and released. It's been a long time. And when you've been waiting a long time for something you care about, you get really passionate about wanting everything to be just right. You want the gameplay style you feel the series should best take and stick to that approach. You want the tone to be what you felt should have always been done and handled well. You want the game you spent six years convincing yourself is going to be the best damn thing you've ever wanted. And I should know. I've been waiting six years to play a new Sonic game alongside the rest of you. And yet, here we are, with a game that seems like it wants to do a million things at once. Unleash style Sonic gameplay, 2D Sonic gameplay, an apocalyptic setting, a plot written by Puntaf, yeah we'll do another episode on that, Green Hill Zone, Wisps, vocal songs, and now a character creation tool just off of what we initially know? Whether this is a sign of the series trying to please everybody in desperate confusion, or a sign of the series trying to condense its many experiments into one solid statement of what the series has been and what it could be, the end result has gotten a lot of fans worried about what the final game will be like. The character creation feature may be a symptom of what many Sonic fans fear Forces is going to get wrong, 
but it may also end up being a victim of that same problem. There's a chance that it will be underutilized, and while there are a couple of decent ideas implemented, it really should have been given its own game. Basically, I'm worried that it'll turn out to be Ultimate Tenkaichi instead of Xenoverse. Hopefully, I will be proven wrong.